I remind members that if the amendment in the name of Marie Todd is agreed to, the amendment in the name of Paul Sweeney will fall. The question is that amendment 7812.3 in the name of Marie Todd, which seeks to amend motion 7812 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton on addressing the crisis in NHS dentistry, be agreed, and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. I call Kenneth Gibson for a point On of order. On a point of order, I was unable to uh, connect to the digital platform. I would have voted yes. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. Point of order, Liam Kerr. Yeah, I wasn't able to vote. I would have voted no. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 7812.3 in the name of Marie Todd is yes 67, no 53. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. The next question is that amendment 7812.2 in the name of Sandesh Gulhani, which seeks to amend motion 7812 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton on addressing the crisis in NHS dentistry, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote. Members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 7812.2 in the name of Sandesh Gulhani is yes 53, no 67. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The amendment in the name of Paul Sweeney has fallen. And the next question is that motion 7812 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton as amended on addressing the crisis in NHS dentistry be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and members should cast their votes now.
The vote is closed. I call Kenneth Gibson for a point of order. Unable to connect to the digital platform, I would have voted yes. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on motion 7812 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton is amended is yes 65, no 55. There were no abstentions. The motion as amended is therefore agreed. And I remind members that if the amendment in the name of Kevin Stewart is agreed to, the amendment in the name of Craig Hoy will fall. The next question is that amendment 7813.3 in the name of Kevin Stewart which seeks to amend motion 7813 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton on investing in the future of social care be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 7813.3 in the name of Kevin Stewart is yes 67, no 53. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. Therefore, the amendment in the name of Craig Hoy falls. And the next question is that amendment 7813.1 in the name of Paul O'Kane, which seeks to amend motion 7813 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton on investing in the future of social care, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. Therefore, we will move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 7813.1 in the name of Paul O'Kane is yes 21, no 95. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. Um, my apologies. There were four abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. 
The next question is that motion 7813 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton, as amended, on investing in the future of social care be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. I call Jenny Minto for a point of order. Uh, my app didn't connect. I would have voted yes. Thank you. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on motion 7813 in the name of Alex Cole Hamilton as amended is yes 67, no 53. There were no abstentions. The motion as amended is therefore agreed. And I propose to ask a single question on seven parliamentary bureau motions. Does any member object? No member objects. Therefore, the final question is that motions 7838 to 7842 on approval of SSIs 7843 on committee meeting time and 7844 on recess dates in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motions are therefore agreed and that concludes decision time. Point of order, Neil Bibby. Sir. Um, on a point of order, President Officer, early today at Finance and Economy Questions, in response to my Labour colleague Daniel Johnson, the Deputy First Minister said, the Government has increased resources available to local government by over £570 million, so that cash increase is therefore there for local authorities to deploy in the appropriate way they see fit to meet the challenges in their local areas. I am not sure whether the Deputy First Minister has misspoke or not, but it certainly appears he may have misled the Chamber. The Government clearly want to present their local government settlement in the most positive light possible. However, as the Chamber has heard earlier today, COSLA believe only £71 million of that £570 million is an increase in the resources to spend as they see fit. As confirmed by our own Scottish Parliament Information Centre, this COSLA figure equates to a £304 million real terms cut. The IFS and the Fraser of Allender also believe this budget represents a real terms cut. The issue with what the Deputy First Minister has said earlier today is it is no longer simply an issue of presentation. This is now an issue of fact, accuracy and respect for this Parliament as well as councils across Scotland. The Deputy First Minister knows fine well the £570 million cash increase is almost entirely ring-fenced or set aside for other policies and can, therefore cannot be regarded as accurate. Just yesterday we had the Education Secretary directing education spending. President officer, we know you are not responsible for the accuracy of ministers' statements. Lucky you. But the government ministers are responsible for theirs. President officer, can I ask you, has the Deputy First Minister sought to correct the record on this matter? And will you remind all members, including government ministers, how they can correct the record and remind members of the importance of positive relations between this institution and our colleagues in local government? Thank you, Mr Bibby. As, as the member will be aware, responsibility for the accuracy of a contribution rests with the member making it. And if a member does believe there has been a factual inaccuracy, the guidance on corrections sets out the steps they can take. Thank you. That concludes decision time.